Hey guys, Amber here. We're here in the studio today at Retina Creative Labs doing a little bit of shooting for Instagram TV. And I thought a good way to kick this all off would to be a do and ask me anything type of video with questions from you guys and a bunch of other parts of the internet and give you guys kind of a sneak peek of what's going on behind the scenes. So let's dive in. Favorite food and drink combo, which is really a hard one. Um, I want to say cheese and wine, but that's like the, my inner adult coming out because it's really probably something like Baja Blast and Fritos. I'm going to say both of them if I can give two answers. So <laughs> that will be my answer for one. The second one, which was another one, and I actually brought this up as a family debate in my house, was would you rather have cheese for the rest of your life or potato for the rest of your life? You can probably feel my anxiety already trying to come up with the answer for that one. But I ha think I have to go with cheese. I love potatoes, french fries are my life, but if I couldn't cover something else in cheese, I think it would totally mess me up. So I'm gonna go with cheese on that one. <laughs> Favorite place ever visited? I have to say, it's probably Bermuda. Bermuda was awesome because we did a big scuba diving trip, me and my family love to dive, and we did this dive in the Bermuda Triangle in a shipwreck, which sounds scary, and it kind of is, because it's pitch black under there the entire time and quiet. But it was just something that I felt like I would only do that in the Bermuda Triangle once in a lifetime experience. They do drive on the other side of the road, so watch out, it's very weird. So in the same type of realm, another question that came through is if there was another country other than the United States that I would live in. Bermuda is not the country, even though it's a beautiful place, I think I would love it there. Um, surprisingly, I think it would be England. Everyone here thinks that like British people and the British accent is super cool. Over there, it's the same thing with the American accent and they make you say things all the time like hamburger and everything they think Americans just eat and talk about. So <laughs> that was kind of a funny type of experience there. But other than that, I mean, it was super easy to transition there. And all of the culture and art there is just so cool. It's like New York on steroids to me. So I really felt at home there and loved it there. So London, I'll definitely be back, back in you sometime this year or next year. The top three things you need when traveling. That's another hard one. Um, I do travel heavy. <laughs> I know a lot of people that travel a lot have all these tips to lighten their load. My tips will probably be like how to get your overweight bag through TSA. But um, the top three things, even now I guess if I'm going on a weekend trip and I have to throw in my bag, would be, well, aside from clothes, I guess, if we're going to go with items, would be a curling iron because you can plug that in anywhere and then everyone's like, oh, your hair looks nice when you don't even try. So that for effortlessness, I would say a curling iron. The second thing would be a backup battery, which is something that I know is not new. Everyone forever has been, oh, you gotta get one. They're at CVS, we're getting some nods from behind the camera right now too. And then the third, cause it's never three things. So the third most important, if I had to like in a jiffy grab it all would be sunscreen and this is why not for like the beauty aesthetics part of it it is so expensive to buy sunscreen in other places that you travel to let alone like even if you went to florida like it would be like a million dollars at whatever gift shop was near you even like the cvs that's near the beach knows they can charge more it's ridiculous do not buy sunscreen anywhere else than like your local drugstore or wherever you live unless you live on the beach in Florida, then you should probably go somewhere else. But sunscreen is really expensive and it's something that you'll need, especially if you're going somewhere warm and no one likes to be burned. So go ahead and make sure that's in your bag. So kind of moving out of travel, there were a lot of work questions and there's no way I could answer all of them, but I'm gonna kind of put them all in a nutshell. And the number one question being is what the hell do you do? So it's one of those things, if you see those memes, like what my friends think I do, what my mom thinks I do, it's like totally different. And that's usually what it is. If you ask my mom what I do for work, she's like, oh, she takes pictures. And if you ask my dad, she's like, he's like, oh, she shoots commercials. That's like the smallest part of it, which is kind of funny, but um, the best way of explaining it is I create content for brands. So 
um, a client, I have a few right now, will come to me and say, hey, we're coming out with a new collection, we're coming out with a new product. We need to create videos, we need to create photos, we need to create social media campaigns that tell the story of these new items and these collections and these launches. So I'm a huge nerd for it. I've always, I'm kind of a product of the MySpace generation. I'm always kind of nerding out about branding and different ways to do things online with digital marketing. So this was something that I kind of took a jump and I did this a year ago as a freelancer and I am really happy that I did. It's opened me up to travel. It's opened me up to taking projects that I want to take on, not really being forced to do it, you know, what my agency or what my company wants to do. I have creative control for the first time, which is really great. So uh, in a nutshell, that's the best way to explain it. And then like pigging, piggybacking off of the last set of questions and then the last one of what do you do is how do you do it from the road? So because I'm a freelancer, it's completely remote. I work from home most of the time. I structure my days pretty much how I want. If I want to wake up in the morning, go to yoga and walk my dog and maybe work a little bit later at night, that's something that I definitely can do now. And it's like, you know, night and day from going from a corporate world or a nine to five job. So as far as all the trips and the traveling, I have tons of tips that I can begin sharing with you guys about how you can work on the road. There's co-working spaces. There's different passes you can get for internet, depending on where you are in the world. Um, it's kind of a struggle and it takes time to learn, but it's, I wouldn't live any other way. So it's kind of like living my dream at this point. So yeah, that's how I kind of work on the road while traveling, which is fun. So if you could direct a video, and I have to make sure I get this question right. If you could direct a video with three famous people, dead or alive, who would it be? And this was a submitted question I actually really appreciate. I talk about this all the time. So it's really hard. Again, three would be like impossible for me to choose from. But definitely one, and a lot of people could agree or hate this, is Kanye West. Not because I love Kanye West as a human. And I don't hate Kanye West as a human, but I think artistically, he's someone that in my lifetime, if I could work with someone like that and do visuals with Kanye West, it wouldn't be a joke. Like it would be the most beautiful, cinematic, gorgeous thing that you could possibly imagine. And it would be really something out of the box I wouldn't do with anyone else. So one would definitely be Kanye. Two, This is this part of the video where I don't have these questions or these answers mapped out, so you're really getting them on the cuff. Two would be Selena. <laughs> and not Selena Gomez, Selena, Selena. We all know that, um, that's gonna bring the next one in. We all know that I'm obsessed with Selena, and I don't know why. I'm not Mexican, I'm Puerto Rican. It's not like I have this tie to her, but I just love her music and I love her story. So. I watch Selena the movie probably like once a month and cry alone and it's not normal. But you should watch it because you should know her story and it was the story of someone I think who could have been really famous and their life was cut really short. But really had the potential of being a performer and then also having a business vision and then also being like a modern day woman. So Selena would definitely be someone as far as a deceased person that I would love to work with visually. The last one, and this is totally just makes no sense, is Guy Fieri and I love Guy Fieri because Guy Fieri does whatever he wants to do and doesn't care what anyone is saying about him. He has had that same frosted tip haircut this whole time. He never backed down and you could look this up. I think Guy Fieri is like a pretty decent dude. He runs a bunch of like charity organizations, foundations. I think he's living his life the way that he wants to live it. He's doing the double D, the diners, drive-ins, and dives, and riding around that car, doing his dream. I'm with it. I like the Anthony Bourdain-ness of it, and Guy Fieri would definitely be someone I would pay some money to actually work with. Call me. I'm your girl. <laughs> Triple D, ah! Double D, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that's, that's, I'm never gonna live that down, too. I'm gonna have to put, I'm gonna have to put something in the video that's like, Triple. So another definitive question I've been getting, and these all, these all, all these questions are like life or death, like one for the rest of your life, would you rather? It's very, there's a lot of pressure on me. But the next one is if I had to do one workout for the rest of my life, what would it be? That's not a hard one, it's probably hot yoga. And if you follow me or read the blog or anything, you know that like I talk about hot yoga all the time. I go 
four times a week if I can. There's actually one around the corner from the studio that I try to go to if I can too. So I'm pretty obsessed with it. I think something about doing the flexibility of it, which is awesome, is generally awesome, I think, for your body and your overall health, but something about sweating. And there's this whole theory about sweating. I, there's this book called Younger you can read. There's tons of studies that say that sweating's not only good for your health, but it makes you look younger. So if you wanna do something that's good for you, and if I had to do one thing for the rest of my life, it probably would be hot yoga. Keeping on with the topic of fitness, this question actually came in two or three times, and I think it's from a specific post that I can pinpoint but it's how to keep your butt when you run. And some of you know my journey. I started off as a runner and then moved into yoga and other things afterwards, but I was mainly just a runner when I lost uh, my first 50 pounds, which was awesome. Um, and it does something, I think, as far as giving you that discipline of doing stuff that you don't like to do, that's painful. I mean, running's pretty much the worst, so if you can run a mile or run two miles, you're pretty much okay with going to the gym or forcing yourself to a class or whatever your workout routine is. Running disciplines you, so um, I, I'm a big fan of it, but I did not lose all of my weight from running. I did other things after I ran my first 5K, so, that is how I guess I kept my butt, which a lot of people ask online. Um, I think it's also genetics. I'm Puerto Rican, so I really can't help you with that. That's something you have or you don't. But doing a lot of toning, a lot of squats, a lot of other things outside of running is going to help you keep your muscle mass. Also, how you eat. Do you eat enough protein? I mean, if you're vegan or vegetarian, you can get it from other things. Um, but if you're really shredding, in your diet, you're gonna shred fat. So, you know, you have to kind of make a diet if you're trying to keep some fat that balances that out. So, whatever works for you, I'm not a health coach. You should go online and do some research and talk to your own people about it. But it's a, my answer would be doing a mixture of running, other types of workouts, and then what you eat has a big, a big factor in that too. And then the last question, which is very relevant because a lot of you know I am a Netflix, HBO, Hulu junkie, it's like all I do with my free time, is if I could bring one show back from the dead, what would it be? And that's probably the hardest question out of all of this. Um, no matter what I say, I feel like there's gonna be a show afterwards, and damn, that was a good one. I just finished The Walking Dead, I'm really, really behind on that, and I watched Fear the Walking Dead, but as we all know, it wasn't the same. My opinion, The Walking Dead was better, and I don't like how The Walking Dead ended. I have so many more questions. So, I haven't read the comics. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But if I had to bring it from the dead, it would be a couple more seasons of The Walking Dead that gave a lot more answers than what we got at the end. This other show I would put on the map, and it's not even over yet, but we're on the end, is Game of Thrones. So, Game of Thrones ends next year. I'm not ready for that. And they have spin-off show, spin shows in the works, I think, with Jon Snow and going off on that tangent, but it's just, I feel like they could have done a, a couple more seasons of that, and that's really hurting inside. So if I'm crying all next summer, send some love, because it's gonna be a rough one for me. So that's all the questions from you guys this time around. This was really fun to do. If you wanna do this again, feel free to send questions along. Let me know in the comments or DM me and let me know. Be prepared to see a ton of more content coming out of this studio. We're working with a really cool team of people to come together with campaigns and imagery and videos that are really just top notch and really next level. So I'm really excited to bring those to you guys. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Amber is Real, for all the latest and keep a lookout for the next type of profiles and launch of Retina Creative Labs and all the stuff we're doing here. Thanks for watching. <laughs>